Good morning, everybody. We're here at Natural Encounters at the Houston Zoo in one of my favorite areas of the zoo, the bull rat section of the building. I'd like to introduce you to my friend Rick here that you get to visit when you come to visit us. But what we're going to do today is introduce you to the naked mole rats and tomorrow mole rats. So if you follow me on over here, we're going to introduce you to one of the keepers and some of the animals we have here today. So what we have out is our, a small part of our naked mole rat colony, and Haley, uh, one of the natural encounters keepers, is going to take one of these animals out and show you a little bit. So first, um, the most amazing thing about naked mole rats, some people think, are their teeth which live outside of their gums so that when they dig their burrows, they don't get dirt in their mouth. But the word naked mole rat is kind of confusing because naked mole rats aren't really naked. They have hairs on their whiskers and on their feet. They're not really moles. Naked mole rats are rodents and moles are insectivores. And they're not even a true rat. There are 2,000 species of rodents. There are 21 different types of mole rats. And so the naked mole rats are not naked. They're not a mole and they're not a rat. Naked mole rats live in colonies. Um, and they are a term that's called eusocial, E-U-S-O-C-I-A-L. And eusocial is like termites have queens, some beehives have queens, and even some ant colonies have queens. Well, naked mole rats are one of the only two eusocial mammals in the world. They have a queen, a couple of breeding males, and then they have worker mole rats that take care of the colonies and take care of the burrows and help raise the young. They're quite amazing. They can live up to 35 years in the wild, one of the longest living rodents um, in the world, even for as small as they are. Um, naked mole rats eat mostly vegetables, what we would consider to be tubers, which is like carrots and potatoes and sweet potatoes and yams. Um, they come from Eastern Africa, the countries of Kenya and Somalia. And what's amazing about their social system is they're just like have a house in their burrow system. They have a latrine, which would be like our bathroom. They have a feeding chamber like our kitchens. They have a room where the queen stays in, which is kind of like the bedroom and where she raises her young. And then they have communal rooms that they keep clean and they move around in their tunnels. And in the wild, their tunnels could be two or three miles long. The species is also um, not nocturnal. They live in darkness all of the time, which means that they take naps throughout the day. Um, and so they're active constantly in these tunnels and some mole rats never ever get to see sunlight. Andy asks us if they have any predators. So some of their predators could be Kenyan sand boas, which dig down into their burrows to eat them, and also a snake called the mole snake, which eats mole rats. And if any mole rats do come up to the surface for any reason, uh, small birds of prey like small falcons and owls may want to eat them. Um, they're quite amazing in that genetically they're all similar and they have a resistance to cancer and they even have resistance to pain in their skin and they are able to live in a, a, a room with depleted oxygen which their tunnels would have um, when they're living below the ground. They're also kind of like reptiles and they're one of the few cold-blooded mammals which means that if it gets too hot they go deeper in the burrows and if it gets too cold they get higher up to where it's warmer in the burrows. Alex asks us on Facebook how long can mole rats live? So the longest living naked mole rat is around 35 years old. Um, our oldest mole rat, Haley, would be how old here? About 15 years old, and that would be the queen. Yep, so the queen is 15. A queen can have one litter a year or multiple litters of babies a year. They call them pups. And um, they can have up to 22 pups at a time, but the average is actually about 10. Um, and that's how the colonies grow really fast. And the queen will take care of those pups for a couple of days, and then the then the rest of the soldiers and the, the parent uh, helpers take over. Wyatt wants to know how you can tell a baby boy um, from a girl naked mole rat. Haley, maybe you can help us with that. So it's actually really hard. It's mostly based off their role in their society. So we know the queen is gonna be the female, but she's the only one who has babies. So she's the only one who we can confirm is a female. And then she has some soldiers who are her suitors, which are gonna be our larger mole rats, like this guy right here. And you can guess that he's gonna be a male if he and the queen are kind of sitting together because they are the ones who will have the pups together. So here at the Houston Zoo, you can see the naked mole rats and Demarlin mole rats in the colony burrows here in Natural Encounters building. And we have 42 naked mole rats. Um, here at the Houston Zoo. And we'll show you the DeMarlin mole rats in a little bit once you get a better look at the naked mole rats. 
Evie wants to know on Facebook if they can see colors. So you can see how small their eyes are. Naked mole rats aren't totally blind, but we think they can only sh see shades of, of light and dark, so gray and white. We don't believe that naked mole rats can see colors. They can only see shadows and shades, and that's why their eyes are so small. And if you remember, they live in complete darkness their whole life, and so they really have no need for fully functioning eyes like other mammals. If you get a really close up look at the feet and the mouth on that one, again, you can see the teeth, which is what's so unique about all the mole rat species and how those teeth protrude from outside the mouth. That's a great photo there. And you can even see maybe really up close on the toes, the little tiny hairs. We don't know what the hairs do, why they're not totally naked, whether it's to help keep their feet clean while they dig, um, but they do have hairs on their front feet and their back feet as well. The interesting thing about queen mole rats is they're the same size as other mole rats when they're born, and when they become a queen, become more dominant, they can actually extend the length of their body to be big enough to carry pups. Um, and so by doing that, they have little spaces between their vertebrae that spread out as they get older. And again, we mentioned earlier what they eat in the wild, and what they eat here at the zoo is mostly fruits and vegetables. So again, like sweet potatoes and apples and carrots, um, kale, uh, and vegetables like that. And another really interesting fact about mole rats is they don't have to drink water. They're one of the few mammals in the world that doesn't drink water. Um, they get all their, their uh, water they need from all the food they eat. And here in Texas, there's a species of rodent called the kangaroo rat that also doesn't have to drink water. They don't live in burrows all the time, but they are also another species that can go without water. Cecilia on Facebook wants to know, do they clean themselves? They do keep themselves really clean, and maybe Haley can explain how they keep their burrows clean and keep their nest chambers clean. Basically, the workers live up to their name, and they do all the work, and they make sure that everything has a place. So each chamber, one is a pantry where they will keep all their food, and then the workers will go, and they'll make sure the tunnels are clean every day so that they can move in and out. And they can move just as quickly backwards as they can forwards. So you'll even see while they're in here that they may start to dig backwards. You'll definitely see with our Damara mole rats, but they will start to dig backwards, and that's how they keep their tunnels clean. We had another interesting question on Facebook. They want to know what they feel like. What they feel like, they are very soft. They basically kind of have that baby skin. Um, and we make sure that they get a lot of moisture too to make sure that their skin is healthy. So it's basically just like soft skin, just like if you lotion your hands or something like that and making sure that they stay nice and um, put a lot of brows in there and everything that they have a lot to keep their skin healthy. So Grayson wanted to know how many babies they can have. So in the wild, they could have between three and 22 pups, but uh, most of the time their average is around 10 to 11. Not 100% of those survive all the time, but when a lot of them do, the colony is able to grow really, really quickly. Diana wants to know how long are their teeth? So um, you have to remember when Haley is holding them up, they're actually quite small. You can see how small the mole rat is in their hand and how those in, those teeth protrude out through their mouth. So it's just kind of maybe a uh, half a centimeter comes out of their mouth. And they use those front teeth for digging and for grinding down food so it's easier for them to digest. Jasper wants to know why are they hairless? That's a great uh, question, Jasper. So. Where they live uh, in eastern and northern Africa, in the countries of Kenya and Ethiopia and Somalia, they live underneath the ground, underneath the sand and some of the really dry, arid deserts. Um, and being hairless actually helps them keep clean underneath um, in those burrows. You can imagine if you had a lot of fur and you had a heavy rain and the rain flooded those burrows, um, how wet these guys would get and how difficult it would be them to dry off because they don't come back above ground. So they've evolved to be hairless because it's easier for them to move through their burrow systems and it's easier for them to turn around in tight spaces. Um, and it's really easier to stay clean when you don't have a lot of hair. And uh, speaking of hair, maybe we could pop over and take a look at our demolin mole rats, which actually do have hair. And then we can come back to the naked mole rats if people have more questions. So I mentioned there were 21 different types of mole rats. And so now here we are showing you a species that actually does have hair. The other 20, like the demarlin mole rat here, all do have hair, unlike the naked mole rat. 
but their body shape is similar. They're much bigger. They're about eight to 10 times larger than a naked mole rat. You can see their teeth do stick out on the front of their mouths there so they can, again, dig without ingesting dirt. I want you to notice the little white markings on the tops of their heads. Every mole rat, when they grows up, will have a, mite, a white marking and they're all gonna be different and that helps the keepers tell them apart. We don't know why they're all different in the wild because clearly they don't see that well and they can't tell each other apart other than through smell and other senses. But here at the zoo, it makes it easier for us to know who's who because everybody looks a little bit different. Um, they also have a queen. They're eusocial like the naked mole rats. Remember I said eusocial is like a termite with a queen or a bee or an ant that has a queen. They have soldiers, they have workers, um, but these colonies are much smaller and it's probably because these mole rats are much longer and it's hard to find food and natural resources. This type of mole rat comes from Namibia and Southern Africa, so a little bit different environment where it's maybe even a little bit drier. So having hair isn't as much a detriment. It also helps them keep warm. They're not like the naked mole rats that are cold blooded. So they're able to um, moderate their temper temperature and regulate their temperature um, by um, going up and down the burrows. And so again, these are called Damarlan mole rats, and I'll spell that, it's D-A-M-A-R-A-L-A-N-D mole rat. And the other species we have here is a naked mole rat. And these are called Damarlan mole rats because they come from the Damarlan region of Southern Africa. Haley, how many Damarlan mole rats do we have at the zoo? In this colony, we have 12 different Damar mole rats, and Arrow right here is our queen. And you can see how she's a little bit grayer than the other ones. The older a Damarlin mole rat gets, the kind of the grayer their fur gets. So you can see some grayer animals in this colony. And how are young, how old are the babies that are in this group? The babies are about three months old. Um, and they're all about four months apart. So Arrow and Master Shifu here both started the colony. And their first litter was Catra and Adora, who are just turned a year old and then this is their last litter and they're about 12 weeks or three months old. Debbie wants to know if we clean their teeth. If we clean their teeth, no, we don't. That would take a, we would need a toothbrush for that, we don't. <laughs> so I mentioned, we mentioned that um, mole rats burrow and they dig with their teeth to burrow and that actually keeps their teeth clean. Rodents' teeth always are growing. They never stop growing. So also chewing on hard surfaces and hard foods help keep their teeth chisel down a little bit so they don't grow too large. If they don't do that, then their teeth do grow um, and overlap their bottom teeth, and that's not good. So in the wild, and even here at the zoo, they're always chewing on things to keep their teeth sharp. Um, what happens when the queen dies is a question that Scott has. So that's a great question. So in the wild, some mole rats will disperse to other colonies or set up their own burrow until another mole rat shows up and start another colony. But when the queen dies, the larger females will, will fight a little bit for dominance, and then the larger female that wins that kind of battle will take over and become the next queen, breed with the, uh, the males that are breeders in the colony. Everybody else goes back to work as a worker mole rat or a, a soldier mole rat or somebody that takes care of the babies or gathers all the food. So that, that happens also in ant colonies and other colonies of animals that have this kind of social system as well. I don't know if we wanted to take a look at the mole rat chambers on the wall, and then we'll come back to looking at the naked mole rats one more time. And so what you see here is a lot of different chambers, and they're, they're kind of dirty. You see naked mole rats in one with a lot of food in it, and that's um, one of their breeding chambers where they're moving food in to eat. I mentioned earlier in the Facebook Live that they have a latrine, so they have their own bathroom system that they use to only to go to the bathroom in. They have a sleeping chamber. They have a chamber where we put all the food and they pull out of the food out of to eat um, and, and enjoy at, at their leisure. And then they have tunnels that they move through and they're always digging. And that's why we have pine shavings in here. And these boxes are made of plexiglass so they don't really chew on them. But we give them lots of things to chew on to help keep their teeth sharp and keep them from growing too long. And these colonies that you're looking at have naked mole rats in them. And then there's a colony below this here in the building that has Damarlin mole rats in it. But when you see them, it looks like the two colonies are working together, but they're two separate colonies. Okay. And you'll see over here some of the cleaner chambers and some of the tunnels that we use, and even some of these foggier chambers are where they have food in them. And sometimes that's also where they'll go to the bathroom and that's where they'll use their latrines. 
So they're quite amazing. Um, they're probably one of the most unique mammals on the planet. Um, they're quite small. The naked mole rats only get to be up to two ounces at full size. And the Damarlin mole rats, even though they're much larger, only get to be about 12 to 14 ounces at full size. So that's not even a pound. Um, there are animals that are smaller than these, but these guys are pretty unique and pretty small. And if you want to follow us back over and not bang your head on Rick the Giant Sculpture, we'll take one last look at the naked mole rats in case anybody has any, any more questions on them. So again, you get a great look at those teeth and their little tiny eye sockets that do have eyes in there that don't see that well. They only see shadows and shades of black and white. Summer wants to know if the sunlight hurts their eyes. So with the naked mole rats, um, most likely they won't be very good in sunlight. They have those little tiny eye sockets with little tiny eyes in it that probably doesn't process, process sunlight very well. And I would say 95% of the mole rats in the world probably never get above ground to see sunlight. So they're not used to it. The Demarlin mole rats, which are a little bit bigger and have a little bit larger eye sockets, can probably manage a little bit of sunlight, but not bright sunlight. Um, they need to move really quickly across the desert because uh, they would dry out really quickly. Remember I said these guys don't drink water. They get all their water from food. And so that resource is really valuable to them. So they couldn't be outside their burrows and survive very long. I also want to say as we start to wrap up our Facebook Live that April 8th today is Zoo Lovers Day. And even though you can't come and visit us here at the Houston Zoo, which we're really sad about, we do have as an emergency crisis fund to help the zoo get by while we're closed during this current um, outbreak and while all the public recreation is closed for all you guys to come and visit us. You can follow that link on our Facebook page and of course on our website. Um, we'd love to see your pictures of what you're doing at home, um, and maybe send a shout out to all the zookeepers here that work here at the zoo. We have almost 150 zookeepers that are here while we're closed taking care of the animals every day. Like Haley who takes care of the mole rats. And so it's a really important job we continue to have to do even though we're closed to the public. And don't forget it's Zoo Lovers Day. And we also want you to look up online more about naked mole rats. There's a lot more to learn. It's quite amazing that we didn't talk about today. Um, and we appreciate you joining us for this uh, Facebook Live on some of the most amazing small rodents on the planet. Also, you can join us tomorrow uh, for Facebook Live at 11 a.m. We do this every day, Monday through Friday. I know, I know on Friday it was it's Asian, uh, Asian small clawed otters. Um, and so you can join us again here in the Natural Encounters building for that. Tomorrow on Facebook Live at 11 o'clock, we'll be at the vet clinic. So you'll get to hear from some of our veterinarians and all their work they're doing behind the scenes, taking care of our animals um, while we're open to the public and while we're close to the public. So thanks again for joining us. Don't forget to visit the Houston Zoo website. Um, watch the video again about the naked morats and join us tomorrow again at 11 a.m. on Facebook Live.